So this is your guys' first unit? Yep. Yeah, yeah, nice. Well, congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Right, so we're going to basically go through the outside, um, and then we'll hop on the inside. At any point you have questions, please feel free to ask. Okay. Um, if I need to re-explain something, let me know, and I will try my best to re-explain it. Okay. okay? Um, first thing I'm going to do is actually put out the awning. It was windy earlier, so I didn't want to have it out. Um, the full power awning, I'll show you the switch when we get inside. the store if we're going to sleep if we're uh, pull it doing whatever go ahead and pull it in okay push of a button brings it in um, you can stop that awning at any point so it doesn't have to be all the way out you can stop it halfway if there's a tree in the way or something so you can still utilize part of the awning yeah. um, and then you could also adjust the awning so right now it's sitting level let's say it was raining a little bit but it wasn't windy and we still wanted to use our awning we just drop one side of the awning down to allow that rain to kind of just drain off on the one nice. end. Nice. Oh, so it doesn't oh, pull like that. in the middle and create weight that we yeah. don't need. That's okay. great. Cool. You can do it on the other side as well. You can lower both sides to make the whole awning itself lower. So maybe if you're watching the sunset, you know, and the sun's in your eyes, you can lower it down a little bit. That's nice. Um, however, when bringing in the awning, I cannot bring in the awning right now. I have to match it with the other side or in our case, just reset it where it was. Okay. Okay. So. If you have that side on the first hole, this side will need to be on the first hole. If that side's on this hole, this side will need to be on this hole. All right, okay. make sense? Yep. All righty. So step down below, it's a powered step. If I were to turn on the coach right now, it will go in automatically, whether I turn it on or not. Um, so that way we don't take the mailboxes off going down the road. There's another switch inside. He dropped his... Uh, oh! <laughs> um, Thanks. There's another switch inside that'll actually turn it on and off. So right now it's in the off position. So every time I open my door, it just stays where it's at. Okay. If I turn it on, every time I open my door, it'll go in and out. So doors open, steps come out, doors close, steps go in. So when we're camping, you can just turn it off. So that way it's not going in and out, in and out, every time you're in and out of the okay. coach, okay? Yeah. You get the nice light up top and you get outdoor speakers. All right, outdoor speakers are controlled off a radio inside, not the front radio, which I know you guys are aware of. Um, it'll be one of the rear radios. And then inside our first storage bay, you will find your inverter to my left. So there'll be an inverter switch inside. Um, that'll actually turn on and off the inverter that you see down here. Um, the inverter is gonna take 12 volt battery power and turn it into 110. 110 are, our, are the outlets that we plug in at home. Okay. So you're driving down the road, you need the fridge to stay cool, you'll be utilizing the inverter. You're driving down the road, you wanna use some normal outlets, inverter. Okay. So the big thing is the fridge. Okay. Okay. All right, that's the main reason why the inverter is there is for yeah. that refrigerator. Yeah, so it's right. not like shut, shutting off. And yeah, like so that, yeah, so that you can stuff it cool or you can stuff it with things, keep it cool going down the road. You don't have to worry about putting ice in it and things like that. It'll actually be a full powered fridge while you're driving. Cool. So, so all off that inverter. Quick question with that in the fridge. So obviously the, to keep the fridge on constantly, we always have to have that on, right? So if you switch uh, it off. No. So it'll... right now we're plugged into power. Oh, okay. all right. So. We're plugged into power, so we're already having our 110 power to the entire unit okay. so we don't need the inverter on. Cool. If I were to unplug you guys right now and let's say you were wanting a cold fridge for your journey home, yeah. you would definitely want to keep that inverter on. Okay. You would flip the switch that I'll show you inside. It'll give you a green light. That's when you know your inverter's on and you're good to go. Okay. All right. Then your other option will be running the generator. The generator with the generator on will give you full power to your entire unit. It's like being plugged in. And how many hours would you get off that LP if you read it constantly? That you were like boomed on. It is an LP uh, cap. So that is going to determine all on what you put on it. Okay. That is a very hard question to answer because if you're just running, let's say, the AC off of the generator, you use a lot less LP versus running the AC, the lights, the microwave, things like that. Makes so sense. it all depends on the load that you put on the generator. All right. But it is more than enough power for the entire unit. You can utilize it going down the road perfectly fine. So if the AC from the Mercedes chassis isn't enough, you can turn on your generator and operate the big AC on the house, all right, or on the on the house part of the, the, the coach. Service times, all right, so service times, you're gonna wanna get this thing serviced for the first time at 50 hours. You can take it to any RV dealership or anywhere that works on a Cummins own and generator. Um, so 50 hours is gonna be your first initial uh, service. After that, you can go every 150 hours, okay? okay? Um, there is a start and stop switch out here and a prime switch. There's another switch inside to start and stop the generator. If that ever were to fail, you can come use this one. All right. Um, if for some reason you're going to start the generator and it sounds like it's having a hard time starting and it's not starting, you'll want to prime it. And for priming it, it just says, let's see, 
For Prime, you'll push and hold on the start. All right, you do have a storage bay up top here. Not much, it goes a little bit back here and uh, get some smaller things in there. And it's got access to as well, right? Yes, it does. For oh, sizing. Okay. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah, it does and then have the, the access to uh, Aqua Go, I know that essentially flash heats your water. Yeah. Um, can you show me real fast how to do Can you turn that on from inside as well as out here? Or? So. And there's a switch in the bathroom. So, yep. You have switch right here. It's to always be on. All right. Doesn't matter which one, just okay. always want it on. Okay. Then you'll get the green light. Um, it's a propane, propane powered uh, water heater. It's an on-demand hot water heater. So once your water is hot, which is almost instantaneous, yeah. as long as you have propane and as long as you have water, it's pretty much endless. Cool. All right, I say as long as you have propane, as long as you have water, because if I just say endless, people take me literally, <laughs> and they're like, oh, where's my hot water? Well, you ran out of water. You ran so. out, yeah. <laughs> But it is endless. You'll have a dial system that has all your different modes on it. There is going to be a mode on there that says clean. It's going to be the very last mode on the knob. Avoid going into clean mode unless you're cleaning the unit. Right. All right? You have you're stuck in it for it. three hours. Right. Three so hours. Okay. The clean mode involves turning the dial to clean mode. But before we do that, we come out here, we, we relieve the pressure of the tank. Right. And then you'll open this guy yeah. and drop a cleaning tablet down in there. Okay. They're called, what is the Truma? Yeah, the Truma. Truma cleaning tabs. All right, you'll literally just drop it down in there, go inside, turn the dial to clean, wait three hours. And how often would you, if you're, if it's once constant a use, once a year? Once a year, all right. Propane furnace. That guy does get hot, same with this when they are in use, so just be careful. Don't burn yourself, don't rest up against it. We do make critter guards for the outside of these. It's a, it's a metal screen that'll just sit on here with a spring. You can leave it on there forever. It just protects from wasp and bugs making a hole in there. Well, Down here in Florida, we barely ever use a furnace, so, you know, I know you guys are from up north, right? Yeah. So you may use it a little bit more than we do down here. More, yeah. Right, and then you do have another storage way down below. This one's plastic, so you can keep some of the dirtier items in there. So generator exhaust right here. It does get hot. Watch your ankles, watch your shins. Backup camera. Now with the working radio, we have access to our backup camera while we're driving forward. All right, so while, once you get that guy fixed, go and look around and play around with the radio because there will be a setting on there to view the camera while you're going forward. Okay. All right, that's a big help if we're towing a vehicle, a bike rack, or if we're just driving because it's no, no rear view or there's no rear view mirror. Um, a lot harder to see out the back end of your unit versus a car. So it's nice to be able to turn on the camera and actually see traffic while you're driving. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I know the unit's not too large, but still if somebody's tailgating you, you might lose them in the blind spot. So you turn on the camera, now you can see them that they're right here on your butt. And hey, be careful, you know? Um, roof access, 250 pounds on the ladder. I do recommend getting up there at least every quarter, so every three or four months. Uh, there's a thick white putty substance up there. Uh, you'll recognize it right away. It's called Dicor, D-I-C-O-R. Um, it comes in a tube similar to like tile caulking. Yeah. Uh, we sell it online, we sell it in the store. Um, that's, that's the ceiling up there. So if you're noticing a crack, a peel, or a nail head poking through one of those die core seals, mm -hmm. it's literally covered up with more die core. Okay. Um, two more years go by, the nail head showed up again, cover it up again. All right, if you see a peel or a crack, it's not worth calling service over. It's yeah. not worth the hassle. You can get up there and do it yourself. So hitch down below. Let's see if I can see. Uh, 5,000 pounds on the hitch. You do get a four or a seven pin connection. So towing the vehicle, you're fine. Towing bike rack, you're fine. Your cord, 30 amp cord. Um, this cord does go home with you today. It's quite long. I believe it's a 50 foot cord. Wow. Um, this, there's a couple of things I'm gonna recommend for us to get for this cord, all right? The first thing's gonna be what I'm using over here. It's called a, we call it a dog bone adapter. And it basically is allowing me to bring your 30 amp unit up to a 50 amp post. I was actually gonna ask you about that. So that's oh, good because I know that power yeah. varies, you know, depending on where you yep. might be. Nice. So and that I'll always bring it to 110 in the coach or at least closest. That'll, yeah, them? that'll, that'll, yeah, we sell those. Okay. That'll power, like the way you're doing it right now, you're going into a bigger power supply, so you're gonna guarantee you have power to your entire unit. You can buy another one of these adapters that goes from 30 to 110, yeah. which is now your house outlet. 
Okay. You can have full power to your coach with the house outlet, you just can't power the AC. Okay. So that will help with getting the fridge cooled down. Okay. All right, your unit's been sitting in the backyard for a month, you're now ready for your trip. Plug it into the extension cord for the house, turn the fridge on, leave the AC off, get the fridge nice and cold. Once it's cold, stuff it with all your stuff, run it off the inverter. Okay. Unplug your coach, go for your trip. Um, and then the most important thing I'm gonna recommend for you over there is a surge guard or a surge protector. Um, it looks very similar to the dog bone, it's just a little bit larger, but you'll plug that into the post and then you'll plug your uh, cord into the other end of the surge guard. And then if you ever had to use that adapter that I showed you, you just plug that surge guard into the other end of the adapter and then your cord to the other end. Right, okay. All right, that'll protect your coach against surges, of course. Um, let's say you had a laptop or something plugged into an outlet and you got hit by a surge, you might've just lost your laptop. All right, so it's pretty important to have one of those. Sometimes you go to a campsite and they'll have reverse polarity in the in the post, and that will never be good. So definitely, definitely an investment to one of those. Okay. The cord does plug into itself when you go to store it. All right, there's a spot for the cord to literally plug into itself, like plug into the coach. Um, if you fail to do that and you turn on your generator, you will not get power to your coach. All right, you do have to make sure you plug it into itself. Okay. Um, and then back there, you'll have your cable in connects. So if you're ever out at a campsite and they still offer cable, you can screw in the coax cable back there. And to the left of that, right there, that's for more solar panels. Oh, right, yeah, because yeah. it comes with two, right? It does come with two on the roof. Um, however, if you wish to have an external solar panel, lay it in the grass, put it, plug it in right there. All right, and all those do is just help trickle charge the battery. All right, it's not gonna power the coach by itself. It's just gonna make sure that those, those batteries do not die. Um, then over to the wet bay, we have the outdoor shower, hot and cold. Hot only works, of course, with the water heater on. Right. Um, you do get a water pump switch out here, so you don't have to run all the way inside to turn on this hose. So when I turn this on right now, nothing's gonna come out unless I hit my water pump switch. Now I'll get my flow of water, like so. So we only need that water pump switch if we're pulling from the fresh tank. If we're hooked up to city water, right here, we do not need that water pump. Okay, because you're pressurizing the system with the city water. You do want to get a water pressure regulator for this guy. You're also going to want to get a, po a uh, potable, or I call it potable, a potable water hose. All right, it's a special water hose that basically has a technology in it, keeps it from getting algae and mold inside of it, so it's safe to drink from. Okay. All right, since that's going to have a lot of water going through it constantly, you definitely want to look into one of those. Uh, there's a couple other things down here. This right here. If you wanted to fill your fresh tank, all you have to do is just turn this and now you're filling your fresh tank from right there okay. instead of city water connections. Okay. All right, so if you are using city water hookups, you do need to make sure that it's in the normal position. Okay. All right. And then uh, all these guys down here, these are, these are tank drains. So the middle one is gonna drain your fresh tank. So if you end up filling it with water, you don't use it and now it's going into storage, drain it out. Drain it. All right, the other two, are gonna drain any water that's in the hot and cold lines. Okay. So any water between the tank and the end of a spigot or a shower head will come out through those drains. Um, basically, whenever you go into storage, open up all three of those, let all the water drain out of them, close them back up. All right. Um, and then for the, the sewer, you have your black and your gray. So you'll hook your sewer hose up the same way this cap goes on down here. Yeah. Twist it, make sure it's locked on. Once it's locked on, you can go ahead and pull the black let all the contents of the black drain out. Once it's done, go ahead and pull the gray. All right, gray is just soapy water, so it's just gonna help rinse out that hose. And then the black, of course, is the toilet water, so we wanna make sure we do that first. Once you're done with that, you still have the sewer hose connected, you still have this guy pulled out, you're gonna hook up a normal water hose to this guy right here. All right, that's gonna spray water into the black tank and flush it out. All right, the reason why I say a normal water hose is because it's gonna backsplash a little bit. We don't wanna use that same hose to now drink out of. Right. All right, and that you can just get a five, $10 water hose from Walmart. Okay. All right, you don't have to worry about getting the fancy potable one or potable, whatever the word is. Right. So we had one way to fill the fresh tank right there, right, by switching the knob from either city water connection or fill the tank. Right. This is another way to fill your tank. Oh, okay. All right, this is a gravity fed. So you just stick your water hose down in there, it'll rest in there, you turn it on, um, there's a level reader inside that tells you your water levels. Uh -huh. Either when that reads full or this overflows, you're full. That's when you overflow. All right, okay. so there's two ways to fill your fresh tank. Sure. Um, I do like that way because let's say you're leaving the RV park and you're driving 12 hours home. You don't have to untwist the hose, turn off the water, come all the way over here, turn the water back on. You can just turn the knob, fill up your tank. 
golf. Some people ask me why would you want to drive with, with, with water in the tank even though you're going to a campsite with water. Um, let's say you're driving from your house to a campsite, it's 12 hours away. I'd travel with a half a tank of water. That way in case you need to use the restroom, you can use the restroom, you can flush the toilet, you can wash your hands, um, do whatever you need to do. You get to your campsite, hook up to their city water, and drain the rest of your fresh tank out until you're ready to leave. Do the same thing when you come home. Okay. All right, it's just a helpful hint. You don't have to do it, but you know, that way you don't have to pull over at a McDonald's or a Circle K and you know, use the restroom or something. Down below is, this is where we're gonna keep our sewer hose. So you'll just undo that strap and shove it on in there. Okay. So it's out of sight, out of mind. And then you get more storage and more storage. Oh, nice. And then the last little guy right here, I couldn't find the propane because <laughs> I didn't know this was a bay. Pull, pull this little guy down. And then there's our propane. Oh, perfect. So it's nice. All you have to do is turn it on and off. Yeah. All right, and then this is a fill and a bleeder valve. You right. won't be worrying about filling it. Um, you can get it filled at RV parks, Ace Hardware, and like uh, gas companies themselves right. will do it. Okay. So usually you won't be the guy operating these two things. So fuel fill is gonna be right here. However, I can't access it unless I open my door. All right, it's a safety feature, of course. Cool. Uh, diesel, again, no gas, only diesel. Oh. And then we'll go ahead and go into the hood. All right, so it automatically latches, right? Okay. But it doesn't mean just shove it. You gotta push that guy down. All right. Okay. Gotcha. okay. I made that mistake once. <laughs> uh, so, under the hood, we do have our windshield washer fluid. We have our brake fluid. We have our coolant overflow and fill, oil fill, and then most important to you guys is gonna be the def. I was gonna ask you about. That. I don't know okay. if you're familiar with def. Yeah, I've seen it in the videos. Been talking about it, but I'm not sure its purpose. Diesel exhaust fluid. Um, so basically, you know how older diesels, you uh, you may not know, but older diesels, they bunch of black smoke going down the yeah. road. It pretty much, it does a lot more, but it pretty much keeps that from happening. It okay. uh, makes the diesel a lot uh, cleaner to burn on a lot more like, um, I guess, environmental friendly. Right, okay. You wanna make sure that you don't run out of this. There will be a level reader inside. So I'll show you that, of course. Um, I always like to tell my customers, keep an extra, um, jug of this inside one of the bays, just in case. Okay. However, gas stations will have for sale, and, and I've heard other gas stations along like major highways and stuff will have a pump for diesel, and it will have a pump for death. Really? So okay. So you can just pump it up right there. Oh, that's good um, I've heard you get about two tanks of diesel as you do one tank of this. Right. Okay, so it's almost a two to one ratio, but again, it does, uh, it does depend on your drive style. If you're heavy footed, you'll go through more death. You know, if you're lighter footed, uh, lighter footed, you'll go through less death. Yeah, I'm, I'm grandpa when I drive. So. so, and then you see what it does when it meets contact with the air, it crystallizes like this. So, okay. if that ever, if you are pouring it and you ever, oh crap, just wipe it up as quickly as you can. All right. Yeah. If you're ever going to jumpstart the vehicle, you may notice there's no battery in here. Oh yeah. This is a positive connect. That's right. That's a negative connect. You're right here. Oh, perfect. That's good to know. Yep. The batteries, batteries are in the steps, right? Their house batteries are under the steps. The chassis battery is under the front seat. You will need to check the water levels on these batteries. All right, they'll pop off the cap on them. The water, oh, the, the water, you say, did you say the water levels? Yes, water levels. And batteries? Yep. Oh, that's okay, so that's new to me, so. Um, so what happens? So you'll yeah. pop off one of those caps, it doesn't matter which one, okay. but you'll pop them off and just check to see if it's filled with water. If you need to fill it with water, distilled water only. Okay. Right. All right, okay, and just fill it up till, till it's level with the shoulder. Okay. So we can't use Spindrift. <laughs> I would check those every month just to be on the safe side. Okay. Um, and especially before a big trip. Last thing you want to oh. do is get all the way to your campsite and have two dead batteries. Oh. Oh. The bright side of things, alternator of the vehicle will charge all three batteries. Okay. Solar, trickle charge. charge. Shore power will charge. Right. And so will the generator. Right. So if those die, you did something wrong. Right. Because <laughs> yeah, they of really course. shouldn't die. And or I, I, I instructed you wrong. So. <laughs> And I know that um, it's a good idea to keep your solar uh, solar panels clean because I, I was watching this dude, even just a bit of dust, it was like, he wiped it off and it was up with the thing. Yeah, I didn't mention that when we were back there. You do, you do want to make sure that the solar panels are clear of debris, dust, things like that. Because um, of course, any layer of dust is going to, less sunlight is going to be absorbed into the panel. Right, okay. okay. We we'll step on inside. Should we take our shoes off? It's, it's our coach. We can, you can sit. So it's all closed up right now. We're actually gonna get it leveled. 
And then we'll open up the slide. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> nice. All right. Please. So, first thing we want to do when we get in our unit is level the coach. Oh. So, before we open up the slide, while the slide's closed, you want to level. After you know that your uh, cords can reach and everything can reach, because you would hate to level and be this far from the post, right. then you got to unlevel and back up a foot. Um, you'll come down here and level the unit. We got power. You actually don't need the engine on for this. It could okay. be off, on, doesn't matter. So you turn on power. Yeah, we go. go ahead and hit auto level. Okay. All right, it's gonna do its thing. Yeah, you'll get a you'll get a green foot right here. So let us know when it's done. So now it's just gonna make small adjustments. All right, green foot. Solid green foot. Solid green foot, we're okay. level. Sweet. And then now we want to leave, slides in. All we have to do is hit retract. All right, so I'll hit retract. And now it's gonna bring everything back up. Right here, it says all up. You'll get an orange light right here. Um, and then now you got the all up there, you'd be good to go ahead and hit power and turn it all off. There is a way to manually level the jacks. However, it's impractical. Just right. hit auto level, let it let it do its thing, and then you're good to go. Yeah. While it's leveling, refrain from moving. Make sure nobody's outside in case something goes wrong. Make sure nothing's underneath the coach, all right? Yeah. Things like that. So we have other switches down here. You saw your awning in and out, the awning light. And then there's your step light, or your step, I mean, the step on and off. So mm -hmm. push that little red guy over. I flip the switch and you hear the step come in. Yeah. And I can turn it off again and it will stay in. Okay. Um, coach battery, that's a disconnect to the battery. So whenever you are not using the coach, you do want to turn that off. Okay. All right, we're plugged in, so nothing happened. Mm -hmm. But uh, with the coach battery on, you'll be charging things going down the road. With it off, you won't be. So mm -hmm. if you're driving, just make sure we leave that on. Um, and then, like I said, you're in storage, turn it off. If you fail to turn it off, you'll come back with dead batteries. Okay. okay. All right. We have light switches. Basic light switches. Is that even a switch? Nope. Another light switch. And then the radio for the outside and inside. So I turn it on. So zone A is gonna be inside. Zone B is still inside. So then zone C must be outside. Zone C is your outside. Nice. So you see how I was doing that? Just cycling through the zones. Yeah. And then AM, FM radio, it's got Bluetooth on it. Um, so you just go to your preset or your mode and you can change it to Bluetooth, hook your phone up to it, listen to music to it like you would at home. Fire extinguisher to my right. If you see a fire, you're gonna wanna use that. But we're gonna go ahead and open up the slide right now. Is the coach on? Yep. Now I know this parking spot pretty well, so I know nothing's over there, but when you guys do this in the future, I have somebody outside watching this in case. And it's okay to do this right now, that, even though the level yeah. is done. Yeah. I was just gonna explain that to you. If you ever have to pull over at a rest stop for a few hours, take a nap, you know, get some sleep, yeah. it's okay to operate the slide without the level is. Over time, however, you want to have the jacks down. So if this slide were to stay out for a few days, you know, right. then we'd want to have the, uh, the the jacks down. Okay. So now that we have our coach opened up, you can see the full size of the coach. Um, I showed nice. you the fire extinguisher. Above you, you're going to have a smoke detector. All right, a nine volt battery powers this guy. So it will chirp at you when it's dead. Carry extra ones with you. So the TV. It's a regular old TV, it's not a smart TV, unfortunately. Um, you can get a Roku and plug it in, or an Apple TV, you know, like we do at home. Yeah. Right now, we're operating off the antenna on the roof. There's a 360 omnidirectional antenna on the roof. Uh, we don't have to raise or lower it or anything, you're perfectly fine there. However, you do need to scan for channels whenever you get to a new location, if you wish to use the antenna TV. Okay. All right, so I'll go over that. All you have to do is just hit menu, go over to channels, and then auto channel search. Right, okay. And then just choose antenna, and it's gonna scan for anything in the area. All right, and then if you're just using a Roku or whatever, you can just plug it in. Uh, let's see, this guy's open. Oh, he's up. Right. He's up. Oh, yeah. Gives you good access to behind the TV, so just pop one of those out, put your Roku in. Awesome. Um, or you can plug it in right here. You plug in uh, your Roku, your Apple TV into there. Now it's on your TV, so you don't have to fiddle with these. If you are ever plugged into cable at the RV park with the cable connections downstairs, yeah. you do need to turn off your antenna. Okay. To do so, there's a button right here. Press it, it turns off the antenna. Where's the button? 
are on the other side of this, this coax. It's a little tiny black button. It turns off the green light. So green light, antenna on, green light, antenna off. Green light's off, you're ready for cable. Green light's on, you're watching antenna TV. Got it. If you're using your Fire Stick or your Apple TV, it doesn't matter. Cool. All right, anything else in there? Get some more outlets in there. So if you wanted to put a DVD player up here, plug it into there, same nice. thing applies. Okay, cool. User manuals on the entire coach are gonna be right oh, here. Oh, wow. It's a lot of reading. Yeah. So there's gonna be in a microwave, the stove, literally everything. You get a double bin sink. I actually like these over the single sinks because yeah. we can try our dishes somewhere. So it is a lot more convenient. Anything under here? Water filter. It's a canister. So all you have to do is just twist it off and replace the filter inside of it every three to six months or depending on use. Is this a new one? Yes. Sweet. Gross. Yes. New water filter. So just drinking water straight out of the sink? Yep. Sweet. So that, yeah, I'm glad you said that. That's only filtering the sink. Yep. That's not filtering not shower the water, bathroom sink, stuff like that. So the main part of this unit, all the controls up here. The fridge is really easy to use. We'll go through that first. Literally just choose your temperature, five being the coldest. And then if you're ever in storage, just make sure we turn that off, okay? And then uh, we go up top to all our controls. This guy, solar charge controller, nothing you need to do there. All it's doing is telling you what your batteries are at, 14.3 volts. You're receiving 0, 0.0 amps because we're under a cover. And in the past hour, you've received 1.2 amps. So AH is amps an hour, okay? And then we're back to 14.3. Battery type, it's already preset for your batteries. So if you ever got lithium installed, you'd have to go in there and change the battery type over to lithium. Okay. All right. Um, inverter control. Inverter's on. Inverter's off. I don't know if you can hear it, but there is a slight beep in yeah. the distance. Uh, that is the actual inverter itself turning on. So you want to keep the fridge cold when you're going home. Just make sure that green light's on. Unplug. Now your fridge is cold. Okay. Uh, you saw your slide out controller right yeah. here, in and out. Up top is like um, gonna be your water pump on and off. So right now water pump's off. Hit the button, water pump's on, water pump's off. Let's do that again so just that's to make like, sure. So if, if you're gonna be using yeah. any of the shower, sink, anything, you gotta turn your water pump on. Yep, unless you're hooked up to city water. Right, right. Yep. But exactly. if, you're, if you're driving along the road, you pull over to just use the restroom, yes, you need the water pump on to flush the toilet. Like right now, we don't have city water connections, so I would need that water pump to show you the sink, to show you the toilet, anything like that. All right, so I'm actually gonna leave it on. All right, we have tank levels. So fresh water tank is full. LP gas tank is full. Gray waste and black waste are both empty. Do they give you, um so is it just full and empty? No, they give you in-betweens. They give you by the quarter. So okay. it'll be one fourth, you know, half, and then three fourths and full. Cool. For black, I would try and get it dumped by the three fourths mark. Right. Don't wait till it says full. No, Cause yeah. you could be one flush away from being at the very top of that toilet. And then over here we have the generator. All we have to do, just hit start. And start. it's gonna do auto start. You don't have to push and hold. Okay. Just hit start and give it a few minutes or a few seconds and it will start. So, there's your generator. There it is. You are at 35.9 hours, so we did service it. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna suggest for you to do is just run it 50 hours on top of that 35. Okay. So get it serviced at what 85.9 for that first service, and then after that go every 150. Okay. All right, because if you were to service at 50, that's 15 hours away. Right. All right. Um, so generator, like I said, just hit start. You don't have to push and hold it, um, and then just hit stop to turn it off. Okay. And then meter. Meter is just telling me my gen hours. That's all it is. Okay. And then battery level. You can see your house and your chassis battery levels. Nice. Which is really, they're both at pretty much as high as they can get, which is good to hear. Holding tank heaters, um, exactly what it sounds like. Your gray and black will not freeze. So if you're camping up north, turn that on. There's heating pads on the tanks, so that way they don't freeze nice. in extreme How weather. Cold? How cold? About zero degrees. Sweet. Zero to 10 degrees is about the lowest they can go. Wow. Anything past zero degrees, you're still gonna freeze them. Wow. Right, okay. Right. We don't plan on taking it too cold, no, but, it's, but and I do know that that takes a lot of battery, doesn't it? Does. It does. Okay, so it's gonna be so a of them. It does. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, hey, you had an LP switch on the outside on the tank itself? Yeah. You have another one out here. Okay. So the only time I'm gonna have you turn the one off outside is if you're in storage. Okay. All right, you can operate it on and on, or on and off right here. So if you're not cooking, just have it off. And if you're about to cook, you can just flip it on. That way, if it's raining, you don't have to run all the way outside. Turn the switch on That's outside, crazy. things like that. So you're in storage. There's gonna be a few things you need to do: the low point drains, the tank drain, the um, sewer, or the uh, the sewer, the um, LP, and then the battery disconnect. Storage. 
storage, breakers and fuses. So with that, normal 110 breakers, all right, they flip, you just flip them back like you would at home. Right. And then we have fuses. Carry extra fuses with you. They will blow in the middle of the night. That's when they like to blow. Uh, it's never convenient. So that way if one blows, you can just get down there and switch it out in the middle of the night. Okay. All right. And then access panel. If you're ever winterizing, there's going to be all your winterization valves in here. Down here in Florida, I absolutely have no clue how to explain winterizing the proper way. <laughs> So if you ever do plan on winterizing, I would say either A, look up videos yeah, on it, or B, good. just have somebody do it. Yeah, get somebody to do it. Central air controls, really easy to use. Um, you guys have central air up in Kentucky? Yeah. yeah. Yeah? Okay, so pretty basic to use. So we just hit the big uh, rectangle bar for our modes. We have cool low auto, cool high auto, so it'll turn on and off as the temperature reaches 72. I hit it again, now I have heat electric, which is literally electric heat. It'll only work if we're plugged in. Um, and then I go over, I have heat electric and gas, so it's gonna be the combo. And then I have just heat gas, okay. which is gonna be that furnace. All right. All right, and then I go back, I have off. So this is where we wanna be when we unplug or when we turn on the generator. And then we have fan low, fan high, and then back to cool high cool low, and then cool auto. So we come into the, the restroom, standard sink. You do get another water pump switch back here. So if you're using the toilet and you forgot to turn on the water pump, you can do it from right there. You do have a GFI reset in here as well. So that's gonna be for every outlet on the coach. And above that is that Truma dial system. So the Truma dial system. The first one is gonna be Eco. All right, Eco is gonna be about 105, 110 degree water. The next one is just a normal heating mode, about 120 degree water. Right. Next one is off. One down from off is gonna be if you're in freezing temperatures. It has a little snowflake and a lightning bolt next to it. That's basically keeping the water recirculating in the uh, water heater so it doesn't freeze. Okay. And then the last one is the clean mode, which is what we don't go into unless we're actually cleaning. You know what these are for? The boosters. Yep. Oh yeah, the boosters. So when they're yeah. spun around. You also have your table in here as well. You can go up there as well. Yeah, perfect. All right. So when you spin those two chairs around, now you have uh, a nice table up there. Yeah. Flushing the toilet. Yeah. Number one, you can just do your business, give it a flush. All right. All right. Number two, you can give it like a half press, you can fill it up with water, make it look like the toilet at home then flush. All right. This is also where you're gonna wanna pre-treat the black tank. Right. So after you get done flushing and dumping downstairs and everything's closed up, you'll come in here, you'll put about five gallons of water down there. So you can just push and hold and wait for about five gallons of water to get down there or you can pour water down. Sure. And then you're gonna take a pre-treatment pod or the pre-treatment chemical, either pour it or drop it down the toilet. Okay? Cool. And you'll do that every single time. Yeah. Take your first steps in the RV. How old? Almost 11. a year. Yeah, he's wow. just, yeah, just oh, shot. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was So, HDMI and USB. You, uh, you plug your USB into here, it's gonna mirror onto this. All right, there'll be a mirror mode on that. Same with the HDMI. So if you have an HDMI adapter for like an iPhone or something, you can plug it in there. And then now your your GPS or whatever you're doing, your YouTube video is now on your screen. Okay. Sweet. All right. Um, this guy I think is aftermarket. I've been spending an hour trying to figure out what it is. <laughs> so honestly, if you figure it out, I really hope you email me and tell me what it is because I really have no idea what it is. Wow. I've asked multiple, multiple people and nobody can figure it out. All right, I YouTube. thought it was lights. I thought it was a bunch of Stuff. So yeah, if you put this on YouTube or something and we uh, figure that out, I would love to know. <laughs> we have a button down here. Uh, it says stabilizers down. Or it's not a button, it's a light. That will be lit up and ding dinging at you when the stabilizers are down. So obviously don't start, try and drive with that dinging at you. You will bend all four jacks at the same time if you try to drive with them down. So that's where I said just hit the retract all button with the slide in, they'll come up. Um, down here, this is a little battery boost button. So what that button does is it bridges your batteries together. 
So if you ever were to go to start this coach and the battery is dead, instead of jump starting, hit that button, start your coach. <laughs> now that does work the other way around. Yeah. So the generator starts off the, the house batteries. If those are ever dead and the generator won't start, you can flip that switch and start the generator. Okay. And then it should charge everything back up. Nice. Right. All right, pretty cool. Answer and receive phone calls. You can raise the volume of the radio. And then uh, this guy will let you scroll through your gauges over here. I hit the right one. Okay. Right. on the right. And I just scrolled up. Okay. And then there's the death fluid. Okay. So it's at three quarters. And then yeah, that's about it. You don't get any chargers up here. Uh, you do get a couple that are on your side. Um, normal glove box. Uh, USB, the USB is in the HDMI. Ashtray, cigarette lighter, all that fun stuff. And then you have, a, you have a 12 volt down below right. and then an HDMI. So if you wanted to get like a 12 volt connector that turns into two, US, two USBs. Yeah, you were asking about the seat. It is that lever behind me. It's on that seat as well. Uh, this seat's a little bit harder to get around because of the uh, steering wheel. Right. However, it is manageable. Right now I gotta pull that seat way up. Nice. And then you put your boosters up so that way you're not sitting right on the floor and then now you can slide this back a little bit. Nice. You're good cool. to go. LP detector. I'm not going to set it off right now, but it will be very loud if it goes off. Right. It's a very loud beep. Um, that's going to detect LP. So, so you have a propane leak. Right. right. All right. Um, that is nothing to fool around with. You hear that go off. You open up a couple windows. You shut the propane off outside. Let the unit air up. Come back in after a few minutes, resume to normal. You can turn the propane on. If it goes off again, we definitely have a leak somewhere. So I call service. Okay. The CO detector, the carbon monoxide detector. Again, nine volt battery powers this. Carry an extra one with you. Uh, nothing to play around with again. It's CO, um, you might've left the window open and the person next to you has a generator on and all of that carbon's coming right into you. So just be very careful. So your couch also is your bed. Oh no, you don't need to take them out. That's really cool. Yeah. However, you see this thing comes down a little fast, so I like to just kind of tap the button and so it doesn't slam into Ooh, my ground. Oh, yeah. There you go. All right, see you tomorrow. I didn't sleep last oh, night. Oh, that is that is a comfy mattress. I heard these is mattresses it? are comfy. Oh, he loves them. Ooh, oh, it's like memory foam. Yeah, I think that's exactly what it is. And then these, they're blue. And if you hold them down, they go white. Yep, that's right. <laughs> Super cool. <laughs> Fancy. And for seat for this as well, like you strap that in as well, so that way when you oh, put yeah. it up, it doesn't fall. Oh yeah. Here we go. All the way up. You get USBs and one tens on both sides. All right, those USBs I believe are going to be 12 volts, so they'll work if you're not plugged in or with the generator off, and then the one ten will work with the generator on or when you're plugged in the water pump itself uh, so if you ever need to service it you can actually do it yourself the water pump is one of the easiest things to replace on this unit oh. microwave is also a convection microwave you can utilize this metal rack while in microwave mode that's perfectly fine um really yeah you don't spark and stuff like that that's what the maker of the microwave has told us i have trust issues so i don't believe I know, that man. so um everyone knows how to use a normal microwave however the convection mode we just hit convect we choose our temperature, so they're labeled on the numbers. I'll choose eight for 375, and then I hit start, now I'm in convection mode. So it's like a mini oven. So we have our cooktop over here. It does have a igniter on it, which is super nice. So we'll just turn it to light, and then see if we get a spark. There we go. Oops. So push and hold for a little bit because it did that. Yeah. Let's see, there we go. It stayed lit. Light the other side, push and hold again for just a second, and it stayed lit. Sweet. So there you go. Make sure we keep this down while we're uh, driving. Okay, you don't want to uh, have it come down and shatter on you. It is glass. Yeah. Remote for the radio. Sweet. Remote for. Oh. Yep. Remote for that. You want to have this open while you're cooking. So this guy right here yeah. is a vent as well. Okay. I believe it's on that switch. The switch right here so you can have those both open while we're cooking this is going to be for your antenna you can rotate the antenna so if you know channel nine is that way and your picture for channel nine is not that good you can literally just spin it and point it towards channel nine there's a switch right here to turn off that's not turning off the antenna it's literally just turning off these lights okay those lights are very bright at night so some people are light sleepers so they're like hey i need those off so just flip the switch 
Look at this. 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 Look